Hey everyone, and welcome to Mysterious Lost. Yellowstone National Park is a place of natural beauty and wonder, but it also has a dark side. Over the years, hundreds of people have gone missing in the park's vast and rugged wilderness, never to be seen again. What happened to these missing persons? Were they victims of foul play, lost to the elements, or taken by some unseen force? In this video, we'll explore some of the most well-known missing persons cases in Yellowstone National Park. We'll examine the evidence, talk to experts, and try to piece together what happened to these people who vanished without a trace. Kim Crumbo, 74 years old Crumbo, was last seen at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming on September 12, 2021. He is from Ogden, Utah, and went to Wyoming with his brother, Mark Crumbo O'Neill, a Chemakum, Washington resident. They went on a four-night camping trip in the Shoshone Lake area of Yellowstone and never returned. Kim previously served 20 years with the National Park Service in Grand Canyon as the River Ranger and later as Wilderness Coordinator. He worked as professional river guide for 10 years and two years as the Utah Wilderness Coordinator for the Sierra Club. Kim was a proud citizen member of the Potawatomi tribe. His grandparents were Native American, and he spent a good portion of his early childhood on or near reservations. His time in the Navy, along with 30 years on the river as a guide and National Park Service Ranger and Wilderness Manager, mostly at Grand Canyon National Park, offered opportunities to work directly with diverse individuals including Navajo, Hopi, Paiute, Havasupai, Hualapai, Zuni, and Ute folks. Kim's 20 years as an advocate for public land protection continued to provide him many opportunities to exchange ideas and concerns of importance to tribal interests. Before his experience on rivers and in wilderness activism, he spent four years with the Navy's SEAL Team 1, completing two combat deployments to Vietnam. Kim received a B.S. in environmental studies from Utah State University with postgraduate work in outdoor recreation. The men were reported overdue on September 19, and a search began. Searchers located a vacant campsite on the south side of Shoshone Lake and found a canoe, one paddle, a personal flotation device, and some other belongings on the lake's east shore. On September 20th, O'Neill's body was also found on the east shore. He had died of exposure. There was no sign of Crumbo, however. He has never been located. Crumbo, a former Navy SEAL who served two tours of duty in Vietnam, is a noted conservationist with extensive skills and experience outdoors. He was on the board of Wild Arizona, a conservation organization, and had worked as a National Park Service river ranger and river guide at Grand Canyon National Park. He is presumed deceased. Stuart Isaac. Isaac left his Burtonsville, Maryland home on September 6, 2010. He left a note for his family saying he was going on a cross-country trip. On September 26, his black 2009 Lexus IS-250 was found abandoned at Craig Pass along the section of the Grand Loop Road linking Old Faithful and West Thumb in Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. The car, which has vanity license plates reading Bellic, was unlocked and still had the keys in it. There were no hiking trails in the area, and Isaac has no experience hiking or camping. Isaac called one of his high school friends in Guam on September 24th, and they talked for two hours. He said he was en route to Yellowstone. His friend stated they rarely spoke on the phone, and Isaac usually kept in touch with email and text messaging. Isaac's friend in Guam is the last person known to have heard from him. Isaac has three tattoos, one on his right tricep and one on each shoulder blade. He may have a mustache. 
He was born in the Pacific Island nation of Palau. An extensive search of the park turned up no sign of Isaac, and the circumstances of his disappearance are unclear. His case remains unsolved. Bruce Parker Pike Bruce was a 47-year-old man who disappeared in Yellowstone National Park on August 2, 2006. He was last seen at the Indian Creek campground where he had been staying with his wife and two children. Pike was an experienced hiker and outdoorsman. He had been to Yellowstone many times before, and he knew the park well. On the day of his disappearance, Pike told his wife that he was going for a hike. He said that he would be back by lunchtime, but he never returned. Pike's wife and children searched for him for several hours, but they couldn't find him. They eventually called the park rangers for help. The park rangers searched for Pike for several days, but they couldn't find him either. They found his car in the park, but there was no sign of him. Pike's disappearance is one of several unsolved missing persons cases in Yellowstone National Park. It is possible that he fell into one of the park's many thermal pools or was attacked by a wild animal. However, there is no evidence to support either of these theories. Pike's family and friends have never given up hope of finding him. They have continued to search for him over the years, and they have offered a reward for information leading to his whereabouts. In 2016, the park rangers received a tip from a hiker who said that they had seen a backpack that matched the description of the backpack that Pike was carrying on the day of his disappearance. The rangers searched the area where the hiker said they had seen the backpack, but they couldn't find it. Pike's disappearance is still a mystery, but his family and friends are determined to find him. They are asking anyone with information about his whereabouts to contact the park rangers. Nicholas Jeffrey Mostert 20 years old Mostert was last seen in Yellowstone National Park on June 16, 2009. Yellowstone National Park officials Thursday identified the man who apparently committed suicide by jumping into the Yellowstone River just above the 308-foot-high Lower Falls as Nicholas Mostert, 20s, of Salt Lake City. Mostert jumped off an observation platform at the brink of the Lower Falls on the Yellowstone River. Tuesday afternoon, witnesses told park officials. He was then swept over the waterfall to the bottom of the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. A gauge upstream of the falls recorded nearly 6,000 cubic feet of water per second flowing into the river at the outlet of Yellowstone Lake at the time of the incident. Searchers rappelled to the bottom of the canyon Wednesday and found some of Mostert's clothing in an eddy about a quarter mile downstream from the base of the falls, according to park officials. The canyon ranges from 800 to 1,200 feet deep. On Thursday morning, searchers in a park helicopter scoped the 20-mile-long canyon with no success. The ground search is focused on observation points along the canyon rim with clear views of the river below, according to park officials. A Darren, Newell Dixon Dixon was 20 years old, last seen in Yellowstone National Park in Montana on July 4, 1993. He was a park employee who worked as a busboy at Roosevelt Lodge. It was his second year working there. He lived in Selma, Indiana during the off-season. Dixon's nickname is Franny. He has a toothmark scar on his head hidden by his hair and a one-inch scar on his knee. Dixon quit his job on July 2nd without giving a reason and disappeared two days later. He was later seen by friends in Cook City, Montana. His car was later found parked at the Lamar River Canyon pullout with his wallet and some other personal belongings inside. On the day of his disappearance, 
Dixon told his co-workers that he was going fishing. He said that he would be back by nightfall, but he never returned. Dixon's co-workers searched for him for several hours, but they couldn't find him. They eventually called the park rangers for help. The park rangers searched for Dixon for several days, but they couldn't find him either. They found his fishing gear on the bank of the Yellowstone River, but there was no sign of him. Dixon's disappearance is one of several unsolved missing persons cases in Yellowstone National Park. It is possible that he fell into the river or was attacked by a wild animal. However, there is no evidence to support either of these theories. Dixon's family and friends have never given up hope of finding him. They have continued to search for him over the years and they have offered a reward for information leading to his whereabouts. Investigators believe Dixon, an avid fisherman, may have drowned. His fishing gear was missing from the car when it was located. An extensive search, which lasted for the rest of the summer, turned up no indication of his whereabouts, but in September his family had an obituary published. A scholarship was later established in his name. He was born in Raymond, Nebraska, and moved to Indiana as a teenager. He graduated Burris High School in Muncie in 1991, and at the time of his disappearance, he was a student at Taylor University in Uplang, Indiana. His case remains unsolved. Dennis Eugene Johnson Dennis was only eight years old when he disappeared during a family trip to Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming on April 12, 1966. The family, visiting from Inukern, California, was camping at the National Park. Johnson, his mother, father, and sister were picnicking at the Cascade Picnic Area just north of Canyon Junction when he disappeared around 1.30 p.m. Johnson's younger sister had wandered away from the picnic area, and Johnson and his father went to find her. According to one report, Johnson was the one to alert his parents that his sister was lost. Johnson and his father split up to find the little girl. His father said that he'd been taught basic wilderness survival skills and had outdoor experience from going on hunting trips. So he wasn't concerned about letting Johnson search alone. His little sister was found, but Johnson never returned to camp. Johnson's family and park rangers participated in an extensive search of the camp and surrounding areas for the next two weeks, but no sign of the little boy was ever found. Reportedly, searches weren't even able to locate any footprints or trackable trail. While most people believe that he simply got lost or injured and succumbed to the wilderness, there is a chance he was picked up by a passing vehicle at the time of his disappearance in 1966. Johnson was eight years old, three eight tall, and weighed 60 pounds. He was a Caucasian male with dark blonde hair and brown eyes. He had a six inch long scar across his stomach running through his belly button. He was last seen wearing a dark red or magenta long sleeve shirt tan Levi's, and size 8 laced moccasin-type leather hiking boots with crepe rubber soles. His family called him Denny. If he is alive today, he'd be about 61 years old. His disappearance is considered one of Yellowstone's greatest unsolved mysteries. We may never know for sure what happened to these missing persons, but their stories continue to haunt the park. They are a reminder that even in the most beautiful places, danger lurks. If you have any information about any of these cases, please contact the National Park Service at 307-344-2122. Thank you for watching, and please stay safe.